one of the most important things to manage when you're dealing with a complicated WordPress website is performance. Performance is what keeps your hosting under control, your server from crashing, your website running smoothly. Performance is not about just the front end of your website and just how fast does your JavaScript load and stuff like that. There's performance on that server level where, you know, how fast does it take for your customer to make a transaction through your WooCommerce site? Or how fast can you edit content and make changes in the dashboard? All these things that are really about WordPress moving quickly and not feeling slow and sluggish. And one of the best tools for this is something called the object cache. So the object cache is a way to save your site from constantly making database requests or external API requests for data that it really should already have. So a kind of a great example is if you have a plugin that's checking for its license key and it's hitting some other server to say, Hey, is this license key valid? It shouldn't do that every single time WordPress loads, it should just do it and then maybe save that information for a day or two and then do it again later. Or for another example might be some sort of related posts widget that lists a couple specific posts. It shouldn't have to go to the database every time it needs those three posts. If they're not really going to change, you want to just kind of cache that information, save it. So that every time it goes and grabs it, it's instantly ready and your site is moving fast. It's not running the same things over and over. So that, that tool that we use is called the WP object cache. There's another tool called transients that is more related to things like e-commerce and stuff. We're not going to talk about transients. We're just going to talk about object cache, but it's very similar concepts, just slightly different use cases. We're going to jump back into our custom plugin and we're just going to look at a simple little function that I've written called function grab a lot of data. And it's really just a meaningless function. The point of it is just to show sort of what it feels like to to set and get something from the WP object cache. So in our imaginary function, grab a lot of data, we just assume that whatever thing it's going to do is going to be a slow thing. Like maybe you're doing a get posts with a negative one post per page, which of course we would never actually do on a real site. We would always just use, you know, a higher number and, and sort of figure out a, a better solution. But this is just kind of giving you an example of something that's just going to like maybe take a lot of data. So with, the WP object cache, what you can do is you can actually check your cache first and you just use kind of a unique name and like kind of a group name. That's just basically a way to kind of silo it just for your plugin. So we can say, Hey, check that cache for this, a lot of data. And if it's there, give it to me. And if it's returning false, that means it's not in the cache yet. Now run this function, get that data for me. Oh, and by the way, stick it in the cache. And so. What we're doing here is instead of just getting this data and returning it every time this function is called, we're actually just going to cache it and try to get it from the cache first. And so it's just one way we're doing this sort of approach and it can get a lot more complicated than this, but this is just kind of a, a really simplified example is just really going to save a lot of time when you start doing things like getting big queries, hitting external sites, syncing with APIs, that sort of thing. And so it's going to stick it in that cache and it's going to stay there now. How long does that cache last? Well, you can do things like set expiration and you can say, Hey, make sure this doesn't stay longer than, you know, a minute or 12 hours or something. If it goes to get it again and it sees that it's past that expiration date, it'll just treat it as if it's not there and false and it'll make you get it fresh. So that's one great thing. The other thing is that you can actually clear your cache and it'll clear all the stuff out. And the next time WordPress runs, it'll reload and get all that information again. Now, clearing your cache is something you can do with a tool like WP CLI, which we covered in the previous video. And so there is a WP cache flush command you can do. Uh, a lot of hosting companies will have something in the WordPress dashboard. That's a quick, easy, clear your cache. So you can definitely do that. And then there's also times where you might programmatically in your code say, Hey, if this happens, you know, if the user adds this information or updates a post in this post type or something, flush the cache for this name. And so you can actually flush the cache yourself based on some other action, so that the next time that data tries to get, it knows to get it fresh. So it's definitely something that takes a little trial and error. Sometimes you you'll get caught wondering why am I not seeing fresh data? Well, it's that object cache. And so it's really powerful and it's something to just kind of spend some time wrapping your head around. Now, one last thing about the cache is the object cache is super handy, but by default with WordPress, just out of the box, you're really just going to have a cache that's going to kind of last in like the session of you looking at that WordPress site and as things reload. But what you really want to have is what's called a persistent object cache, which is 
kind of this extra layer that sits uh, between sort of WordPress and your database. And so if you're running Query Monitor on a site, head over to that toolbar, pull it open, and over here you'll see an object cache section, and it'll actually tell you like how much of the information is coming from the cache versus coming from the database. And then it will warn you if you do not have an object cache plugin enabled. And so if you're on a, any decent sort of managed host, they're gonna have a specific one that because it really depends on the type of server and that sort of thing. If you're on a host that just doesn't offer an object cache plugin, it's probably time to look at a different host. And if you're working in local development and stuff, it's it's probably not something you're going to worry about as much because in local development, you do want to test the cache, debug it and stuff, but you're also like trying to see all fresh information all the time. So if you're doing any custom code or any big sites, go ahead and check them out. See if you have opportunities to use WP object cache. If you have ways that you can make data a little bit faster, a little bit more easily accessible and speed up that backend experience of your WordPress site, speed up any front end things that are happening because they're waiting for that cache to load. So WP object cache is something that's used by all plugin developers, high-end agencies, anybody writing custom code for WordPress, they will or better be using WP Object Cache to make sure that whatever is happening is extremely performant. I've had a lot of benefit just going through old code and cleaning it up, optimizing it, and seeing just you know immediate performance gains from it, getting that WordPress backend experience nice and snappy, making sure contact forms and shopping carts and other things are not struggling, waiting for WordPress to do stuff because of this uncached data. So check it out. And that is our tool today. And stay tuned for the next tool in our modern WordPress development, seven most important tools series.